larry is ah ah but is no no question going to be one of the brainiest presidents of the senate we've ever had. he's very, very intelligent and knowledgeable guy, and i'm thrilled to have him as a legislative partner. it's good to see my friend bobby hackett, and of course mike kenny who understands the subject probably better than all of us put together except for sarah um matt congratulations on your business if folks see you around this is what offices look like these days in most parts of the country and if you walk around anywhere in this vicinity you'll find places just like this. i would disagree with matt on one point no they know who we are um it's not like they say what about ohio i was just at allen and company event with three hundred of the top tech executives and they're all very interested in our state and if you take a look at just things that have happened recently we see a state where we have three large entities uh zillow and real estate mckesson and ibm have all made bought companies here in the data analytics space and uh for an excessive amount of money i mean not excessive but a large amount of money mckesson just uh built it just bought cover my meds for i think over a billion dollars now what's interesting about that is that they're not being moved in the past when big companies like this bought a company here in the state of ohio they moved the company and moved the employees they're not doing it anymore uh, because we're now developing an ecosystem by and large that works the workers comp when i ran for governor back it seems like that was 100 years ago and to all of you i'm sure like a thousand years ago uh, all we heard about was workers comp we know we're doing well because we don't hear anything about workers comp anymore including like isn't it great how things have changed okay so it's like what have you done for me lately with you know in life and in business we've gone from the third highest workers comp rates in 2008 to the 11th lowest. That's kind of math. And this guy, I don't know how much math. Matt, how much money you get back? About eight thousand dollars. I mean, so that's money he never expected to get. And then all of a sudden, one day he wakes up, and government's actually not putting it to him. They're actually doing something to uh, to be able to congratulate him on lowering costs. Which, you know, in this business, you probably don't have a lot of challenges. But across the state, because of the safety grants and the way in which the uh, the bureau has been able to invest its money in a secure uh, way because I've always wanted to make sure uh, that we have a, a very uh, strong system. Nick will tell you. Uh, I pound on them all the time about the way in which they're checking and rechecking, but we've had some pretty good, pretty good earnings, which is really terrific. One of the things that Larry mentioned. This, uh, I don't know how they'll feel about it. We want to give $41 million to schools, which is what's going to happen if the board approves this, which I expect we will. And local governments, who never seem to have enough, are going to get $92 million uh, as a result of this, of this rebate. And that's, of course, good news and tight budget times for everybody. Um, you know, we just have to keep going on this. Our, there's a couple big challenges we have. We have lower taxes, although now you know, I don't know whether the tax reform in the legislature will pass. It should, because lower income taxes actually do matter. Um, uh, our budget is going to be stable because of uh, Cliff uh, Rosenberger, the speaker, and because of Larry. We're going to stay with uh, with conservative budget numbers, so we can keep a stable budget, which is really important. And our regulatory environment is greatly improved. The challenge we have, uh, there's two things really. One is. Uh, the willingness of people in the Midwest to continue to change and take on risk. And there's been some feedback I've received from some members of the legislature that say, well, wait a minute, we need to slow down. You know, there's been so much changes. How do we do tax reform? And how do we lower t income tax rates? Can we just slow down? There is a sense in the Midwest uh, to avoid risk taking. I remember going into a situation with Jobs Ohio. I just had a governor ask me, a Democrat governor asked me, how did you guys do Jobs Ohio? We'd like to do it too. It was, uh, was risk-taking, but we got it done. But it was not easy. Um, the issue of infrastructure, you know, we have $2 billion more spent on highways without a gas tax increase. Why did we do it? Because we bonded against the revenue from the turnpike. And I had to send a, a whole army up into Northeast Ohio to be able to sell the fact that this made a lot of sense. Now, as you can see, no matter where you go, you see infrastructure improvements and you see people working. The real challenge in the Midwest is to be willing to, to move faster, 
and to be willing to take on risk. If you don't want to take on risk, and if you don't want to try, try new ideas, the Midwest will remain unwashed. But if, in fact, we, as one of the states in the Midwest, can actually bring about uh, more innovation, more change, and continue to shine ourselves up, uh, there's going to be more that will happen here, more investment that will happen here, which is really critically important. And that really gets down to schools and education. Um, it is so very difficult uh, here in the 21st century, as it's been in every century, to try to get the kind of fundamental reforms that you need in education. You see, let me just give you an example. The number one occupation in America today are drivers. Now, you know about autonomous vehicles. I just uh, was with a friend of mine at lunch who told me that by maybe as early as 2021, which is not very far away, uh, that we will have fully autonomous vehicles on the roads. In other words, there will be no pedals and no steering wheels in these cars. Now let me ask you a question. What are we doing to make sure that the people who currently drive are going to have an occupation in the future? And what are we doing to retrain them for the, for the changes that are coming? You think we're preparing our students? You think we're making them resilient? You think we're preparing them for being able to, uh, to be a dynamic person, to be able to change their skills and change their occupations? My kids are 17 years old, my twin daughters. It is likely that they will have somewhere between nine and 10 jobs in their lifetime. Are we preparing kids through both our K-12 education system and our higher education system for that? We've introduced some little baby steps. Matt, little baby steps. We think that when a teacher is going to be recertified, they ought to spend like you know a few days in a business, understanding how businesses work and what your needs are so that when they're back in the classroom, they can actually understand what they've got to do to orient their students to the future and to real work. We propose putting three non-voting business people on every school board. We love you go on the school board and talk to the school board about what the curriculum is. Now these are, these are the tiniest baby steps. And I'm hopeful that these will find their way through the legislature. But uh, you know what we're going to see in the future, and you might remember I said this, is we're going to begin to see clusters of businesses putting together curriculum online that people will learn at their own pace, competency-based education, just like we've entered into a relationship now with Western Governors University to provide competency-based education. It has the potential to disintermediate many of the educational structures that we have today. In other words, uh, if businesses can figure out how to gather that curriculum, put it online, and get people trained, we've now begun to overcome the problem of workforce. That's a big, big, big challenge here. And in addition to the problem of workforce, we really need our universities to become business friendly and our universities to be in a position where they want to cre help create companies. Now, if you think about the West Coast, um, the thing Matt's talking about, where, by the way, your, your bathroom is located in your living room because it costs so much to live out there. But if you're a business person out there, you work with Stanford. And Stanford works with you, and you build a business. If you're on the East Coast, it costs a fortune, but you work with MIT and Harvard, you see, in order to commercialize products. The best commercializer we have in Ohio is a Cleveland Clinic. And they brought about some dramatic change with some really exciting companies. Uh, one, in fact, that just got spun off, uh, that has been funded, that is uh, in the data analytics space. You see, at the end of the day, it is, it is about getting those institutions to think about commercializing pro products, to think about the fact that research doesn't amount to much if it's stuck on the shelf somewhere and gathers dust for four years. Uh, because, by the way, 40 years or so is like 400 years in today's rapidly changing economy. So what we're trying to do is make sure we can lower the costs, particularly for small business, where this guy pays no income tax, by the way. And I understand there's some economists that say that income taxes don't matter. I guess, I don't know, maybe we ought to raise theirs and see how they feel. Then all of a sudden, they wouldn't matter. But for him, he pays no income tax as a small business person here, and that's a fantastic thing. Lower workers' comp rates, people who are not hassling him on all these rules and regulations, that's the 21st century. Combine that with some 
some small changes in our education system, a workforce program that's more robust. And you know what you have? You start to have the coast come to the Midwest. You see, you start to have California and New York start to move here for exactly the reasons that Matt said. Lower cost of doing business, lower cost of lifestyle. I had a guy uh, call me about two weeks ago he said, I'm hiring all these uh, engineers, these software engineers in Los Angeles. I don't want to hire anymore. I want to hire software engineers in Ohio because I can hire them for a fraction of the cost. By the way, um, our startup business is 70% less in, in the Midwest here in Ohio than it is on the coast. These things matter when you're struggling and trying to put dollars together. Plus, we have some very, very smart people, hardworking people with great values. It's just a matter of whether we want to catch a wave. Uh, we have to catch the wave because the waves come and the waves go and if you don't catch the wave you get left behind and that that's what ohio is really has to be all about not just as long as i'm governor but in the future so sarah's doing a great job over at workers comp we're thrilled to have her there she is a terrific business woman and we're thrilled to have another woman who's one of the big leaders in our state and she's doing a heck of a job because she's running a very big business Tim Bainbridge is here, but forget him, he doesn't really matter. So, 